Hey everyone, today I wanted to do a quick video on dual clutch transmissions. I've got a dual clutch transmission here in my M4 and I've had the PDK dual clutch transmission in my previous 911 and I get a lot of questions about these, uh, these transmissions and the questions are always a variation on a the theme, they're much the same questions. And the two questions I'm going to read out for you now are very similar to a lot of the questions I get. The first one is, hi Nick, love your videos. I have just one question, I recently did a test drive in a 991 C4S and C2S with PDK, that's a 911. I felt quite noticeable delays with the upshifts. The downshifts were very quick, but the upshifts I could really feel the lag. Did you experience similar condition? Best, Eli. Okay, we'll come back to that. Uh, the other question is this one. Nick, you magnificent Kiwi bastard. Love, loving my M3 even though I got Yas Marina Blue, which I know you hate. I do hate that colour. Uh, question for you. When I take my foot off the brake and drive, the car will not creep forward until I give it gas. Is this normal? The driver's manual refers to a creep mode, but I don't know what they are talking about. Thanks, buddy. Keep up the good work. Johnny the Rapist. <laughs> Johnny, <laughs> you've got to change your ways. Okay, so let's... Um, Let's deal with the first question first, uh, and what uh, Eli is asking about there is why are there sometimes delays in the upshifts? So what we'll do is we'll go for a drive and I'll talk a little bit about uh, what makes dual clutch transmission special and why there are sometimes delays and changes. Okay. So before we get on to talking about the behavior of a dual clutch or PDK transmission, let's take a moment to remember that mechanically a dual clutch transmission is a completely different beast than a regular torque converter automatic, which is what most people are used to. So a torque converter automatic is generally a sequential gearbox, that is, it changes gears one after the other up and down the range. Uh, and it does that via a thing called a torque converter, which are two metal plates with lubrication between them, which allow some slip. And the reason they allow some slip is that between gear ratios, uh, the speed of the transmission will change from the speed of the engine, and it has to have some slip to prevent gear graunching. And this is one of the wonderful things about a regular torque converter automatic, is that they are lovely and smooth between gears. Uh, but it is also the downfall of a regular torque converter automatic in that there is some loss of energy, some loss of torque because of that slip. And so regular torque converter automatics aren't always 100% efficient. Uh, they are when they're locked up, that is the, the, uh, the torque converter is locked and so there's no loss of energy. But when it isn't locked, when it's changing gears and it's, when it's passing through certain revs, uh, you can lose some energy. The other thing about regular torque converter automatics is that they're quite heavy. The torque converters are a big piece of heavy piece of equipment, and so you're carrying a lot of weight around. So, what is a dual clutch automatic? Well, as the name would suggest, um, there's two clutches. But what a lot of people don't realise is it's really two transmissions in one. Uh, normally, those transmissions is one inside the other. But for sake of simplicity in this video, let's just talk about it as the odd number transmission and the even number transmission, because that's what they normally are. Normally one transmission covers all the odd numbers, one, three, five, seven, and the other side of the transmission covers all the evens, two, four, six, and often reverse. And what a dual clutch transmission is doing is that one gearbox is selecting what you is selected what you're driving in at the moment and the other gearbox is trying to guess what you're going to go to so say you're in third gear and you move to fourth what happens is the odd number side of the gearbox is in third the even number is in fourth and when you go to change from third to fourth instead of anything else happening with the gearbox all that happens is that one clutch releases and the other clutch closes and the computer can do this almost instantaneously and that is the real advantage of a dual clutch transmission is that it is an instant change and there's almost no loss in energy because there's no slippage the clutches can open and close at the same time and so you get that smack in your back as it changes gears instantly and there's just and the engine can the throttle can remain fully open and there's no loss of energy that is also the downside of a dual clutch transmission, and that is that the, the, the car or the transmission has to guess what your next move is going to be. So it can pre-select the correct gear for your next move. And to be fair, they mostly get it right. That is, 
it's very rare that when I'm driving my M4, which has got a dual clutch transmission, or when I had my 911, which had the PDK dual clutch transmission, that it ever got it wrong. But it can get it wrong. Uh, and the circumstances where it gets it wrong is where you feel the lag and the change. And what's happening there is, say you're cruising along in third gear, and I'll give a demonstration to this, I'll put it in manual. Let's get out of this traffic here. Uh, I'll put it in manual and we'll go up to third gear. Now when I'm increasing speed and going through the gears, it's pretty easy for the car to, to guess what my next move is going to be. It's obviously going to be the next gear, so the odd side of the gearbox is in third, and the even side would have pre-selected fourth, so that when I pull the up change, the change is instant. Now if I do the same thing, drop back down to third, slow down here, and start accelerating, and then change to second, there's a delay. And the reason for the delay is that the car had anticipated that I would be changing up to fourth, and what I actually did was tricked it and changed it down to second. So that even side of the gearbox had to quickly swap out fourth and replace it with second before the clutches disengaged and re-engaged. Uh, and that is where you get a slight delay in dual clutch gearboxes is when it can't anticipate what your next move will be. And most of the time, it gets it right. And certainly I found the PDK gearboxes in the Porsches are better at anticipating my rather random driving style than the BMW, as I, the, I catch the BMW gearbox out a little more than I do with the Porsches. So that is why you get a bit of a delay sometime, sometimes with these gearboxes, because it can't always anticipate what your next move will be, but most of the time it does. So another characteristic of dual clutch gearbox is their jerkiness at low speeds. Uh, and this is particularly noticeable in cold weather or when the car's just been started, because the car is still learning where the grab point in the clutch is. That is, uh, when, it's, when it's warm, the clutch tends to grab at a different point than when it's cold. So when you first start off in the morning, sometimes you can feel the car sort of jerk or shudder a little bit because the car's allowing the clutch to grab a little early uh, and it's not as smooth as it could be. And this is just not something you see in a regular torque converter automatic. And it's not a problem, it's just something you need to get used to. Sometimes it just means that you have to be a little, uh, a little bit more conservative on the gas when you first start off in the morning and then you'll smoothly pull away um, because it does tend to grab a little bit more at first. And that, this, I found this on all the dual clutch transmission cars I've ever driven. They, they do tend to be a little, uh, little more jerky. What we'll do is we'll pull in up here and we'll talk about the second question, Johnny's question, about the, um, about the creep feature. Okay, so the second question from Johnny, if you remember, was why does the car not creep forward when it's in drive, like his previous car had? Uh, and the reason for that is probably because his previous car was a regular torque converter automatic. And even when the engine is idling and you've got the car in drive, there's enough friction in that torque converter to start the car moving forward in most conditions. Whereas in a dual clutch gearbox, of course, the clutch is completely disengaged until you tell it to engage. Now, what's interesting is different manufacturers program their dual clutches in a different way. For example, most Volkswagen, Audi, Porsche cars will engage the dual clutch clutch uh, when you release the brake. That's the, that's the moment that the engine go, that the computer goes, hey, it's time to start rolling, and it starts engaging the clutch. In, this, in the BMWs, it won't start engaging until you start pressing on the gas. And then it starts moving forward. Uh, in my uh, Porsche and Volkswagen and Audi cars that have had dual clutch gearboxes, I've noticed that the car will even apply gas in order to keep it moving by itself. So if you're parked on a hill and you take your foot off the brake and it needs the car to start moving, it'll keep applying gas as opposed to allowing the car to stall in order to start the car moving forward without you touching the gas. Uh, in the BMW, it'll just sit there. It's nice because if you stop at the lights and it's on a flat surface, you don't actually have to put your foot on the brake. It'll just stay where it is until you put your foot on the gas and then it'll creep away. So the second part of his question was the, the creep mode with the dual clutch gearbox. And what he's talking about there is allowing the car to move slower than its normal slowest speed. So if I press the gas now and the clutch engages, the car starts moving it forward. And in this case, the car moves forward about four miles an hour, which is the slowest it can do at an idle speed. If I want to go slower than four miles an hour, I can put my foot on the brake. And what happens is the car 
disengages the clutch enough to allow slip. It's like riding the clutch um, in a manual car. Uh, and that's the reason why it's probably not that great for the car and why BMW recommends you don't do it for very long because the, the engine is providing this much speed but it's allowing the clutch to slip so that the transmission's running slower. So it's creating friction and heat on that clutch and so it will be wearing that clutch out a lot faster than if it was just grabbed and holding there. So it is possible to run a dual clutch transmission slower then when the clutch is on by pressing the brake it will disengage that clutch and allow slip but it's not something you want to do for very long. So I hope this video has been helpful to you guys that are new to dual clutch transmissions or PDK transmissions. Uh, obviously I believe that they are far superior transmission to a regular torque converter automatic. You don't lose any of that energy and the changes are lightning fast as long as the car knows what, what you're planning to do. Um, they've just got a few little um, idiosyncrasies, I guess, that you have to get used to, um, but th nothing major, you know. Um, you know, you just need to know that if it takes a moment to change, it's because it hasn't guessed what you're planning to do. And if it shudders a little bit in the morning, it's because you're hitting the gas too hard before the clutches have warmed up. Otherwise, they're just great transmissions, and, uh, and you can really see that in the way that a dual clutch transmission will generally way outperform a regular torque converter automatic. Hope this has been helpful. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye then.